I honestly think it's, again, kind of the argument we make about the mirror band when it comes through. Yeah. And when the mirror band doesn't come through, we often don't even see mirror anyway. But anyway, we're going to get into coastline. And we're going to see how exactly that's going to work out. We're going to get into round number one here. It's going to be Team Empire versus Lestream Esport. Don't forget, Team Empire are up 1-0 so far, having taken Clubhouse 7-4 into their favor. They're looking pretty good. Good luck, have fun to both teams. It's going to be very interesting upgrade bands, I think. I think Lestream have an ability here to really bring out something very interesting. This is their map pick as well. Let's see what these bands have in store for us now. Team Empire just spending uh, spending the full amount of time there just to figure out what they want to take out. And we are going to see the Glass Band, despite him not being played last map. Well, I think it makes more sense here as well. And uh, Empire did ban out the Maverick last time, which is a little bit more essential to ban out the Maverick here on uh, Clubhouse than it was on on Coastline. So it makes sense for them to ban out the Glass here. We'll see exactly if there's a Zofia ban coming out from the stream or if that was more specific to their strategy. But no. Wow. That is a really big ban. Yeah, Capitao, Capitao, Capitao wow. was put to pretty good use last time by Empire in, in some of those final pushes. Um, so a bit of an interesting one. It does leave Ying available, and Ying can be quite good on coastline in some in some instances. Yeah, it's interesting as well, because they were playing Capitao as the kind of hard support and planter, whereas Shockwave was kind of second entry in a way. So that was kind of interesting. But we'll see. It's going to be Lestream's second ban. It's going to be Echo, which was the same ban they made last time. Mirabam maybe to close things out, leaving Maestro on the table. There it is. So, same defense bands coming out, but very interesting attack bangers. I like the fact that Lushima are doing things differently here. Although, you know, I don't think the Zofia band really changed that much because Lushima weren't taking Maestro, which I didn't really understand from them. But we'll see how it does go down. Uh, and just as a reminder, Uno dropped 15 kills during the last map. As uh, Scyther dropped 15 and Joystick dropped 13. Yeah, you know, definitely one of the guys to watch. You can see there that he's going to be choosing Ash yet again. So no doubt he's got some more kills in store for us as we move on over into Coastline. Yeah, what do you think about this map? We were talking about it a little bit. It's kind of controversial in a way in that traditionally it has been attacker-sided, but recently it's been a little bit more defender-sided. It all does come down to the bands, and we've seen, you know, fairly typical defensive bands there. I think we've seen a, a very specific ban in the Capital being taken out there by Lestream. I quite like this setup for. Um, I quite like this setup for defense early on, getting yourselves tucked away in a billiards, um, being able to play Shepherd on the smoke into the corner just behind the A bombs to try and deny the plant. Love the Legion coming out. Very glad we're not seeing a castle here as well. Because um, we've seen some teams that, uh, that opt to take the castle, but very much like the Legion coming out here as well. It's interesting. We do actually see a decent amount of coastline coming out from Team Empire. Not really that much in Pro League, but we've seen a decent amount from them in CCS so far. So, which is, you know, what will be cast as well. And Team Empire do play in that. You cast with that, with your counterpart, Ace of Pyrites, who I hope is watching. And we'll see round number one getting underway. And we'll see exactly how that's going to go down. We are seeing the Maestro coming out from Empire, which isn't unusual from them. But I do hope we see the Maestro coming out from the stream when they move onto the defense. What about the Twitch pick? It's interesting as well because we did see this coming out from Liquid and we were a little bit critical of it, but it was actually very key to their attacks. I don't think it's that essential, but I'm very interested to see how it's going to work out. One thing I would like to see is a better use of the vents from upstairs. And I think, well, it's, there's a good opportunity here, right? Because the Twitch zones are very hard to see and they're pretty silent as well, but it's going to be Uno instead. Who gets the first kill of the round? Joystick already down and it's looking very reminiscent of the first round on Clubhouse. Yeah, you know, getting in there and getting that early kill. A very important one, nonetheless, onto Joystick. He's going to rotate back round and he's going to be able to watch the main door just as the Twitch player there is going to get revived as well. Not really sure what happened there. Not sure if it was Joystick that maybe went for a run out and Uno caught him on it. Um, but it uh, it does seem as though, yeah, a little bit of a skirmish early doors. Um, joystick there, just making some, uh, putting some shots down onto Hicks before getting traded out. But yeah, we can see the switch there is just going to be taking out some of the static cams. Again, this is something that, you know, it doesn't really require the Twitch to be doing. Um, so maybe we're just seeing Hicks fancying a little bit of an opportunity on the F2, which is discussed as a very decent weapon. The floor going to now start getting opened up by Rise. He's going to put some, uh, put some shots in, not really deal all too much damage, but it's going to make it very uncomfortable up on Hooker to, uh, to operate now as a defender. And I'm sure that he's going to be looking to throw some grenades in there pretty shortly as well. Yeah, he has been doing very well with that. We're going through into round number one. This is looking really, really good so far for Lestream. 
But they are starting to run out of time, and I feel like Empire don't get as heated up by this as Lestream do. If Lestream starts to run out of time, they start to falter towards the end, and they do rely quite heavily on Uno for this entry. He is still up, however, and as long as he's still up, I still believe that Lestream can take this in. But Empire is still looking pretty good for themselves here. You know, going to move through into the aquarium door. Takes out the camera in the aquarium. Goes for the pre-fire, expecting someone to peek him out. But look at this. Lestream are starting to run out of time here, and they haven't found a pick into the site itself yet. And Empire have got so much plant denial still up available to them. Uno is going to get one, though. There goes Shockwave. That's a beautiful pick coming out from Uno on the billiards window. It's going to throw nades in, but it's going to miss one. That's not going to be enough. The idiots are going to get burned in the back of billiards. As smokes are going to come out. But Scyther on the blue stairs does find Rise. He's got an ADS to play around as well. Docker Recall now is going to come in from Aces. Uno still commanding a lot of the site from this window. Able to hold angles on it into blue and behind the bar. Scyther going to pick up the kill onto Hicks, however. Aces going to trade that one straight back out and getting a down outside hooker as well. Aces going huge with the triple kill to close out the round. What about that from Dockerby? Absolutely amazing. We've seen some really good Dockerby fragging coming out so far, but that's probably the best 3K I've seen from a Dockerby on the G12 in a while. Really well played by Aces to get in there and completely save that round for the stream, who weren't really looking too good until Uno got his entry into billiards. But we will see how it goes down. So we move into round number two, and Team Empire are going to move back to billiards and hooker lounge. Um, what do you think about this defense in general? I, I don't really like it without a castle. You were quite critical of the castle yesterday. I'm not. I just don't. I'm not sure that the castle adds anything in the way that we saw it being used on the externals. Um, I think in that game particularly, we were seeing a lot of sledge play, so it kind of shifts things up a little bit because obviously the sledge is very proficient at dealing with the castles. Finding the sledge can get close enough, obviously, um, but plenty of other operators capable as well. Ash the fear. We've not seen the fear, so I'm not sure if the castle would hold more value because it seems as though the streamer only bringing the ash in terms of being able to deal with that effectively from a distance. So the castle might actually bring more value to Empire if they were to bring it um, in, in this certain you know, scenario, if you will. But they seem pretty confident with what they're doing. We're going to see the same line out again. I don't think that they're going to allow Uno to repel on that uh, on that double window on billiards so easily. and Because he was almost playing that like a Blackbeard on Ash with the way that he was able to just command so much space. He got the early pick, I think it was, onto, onto Scyther. And, the Scyther. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Scyther was just crouched behind a shield, but kind yeah, of a little bit exposed. Uh, it was unfortunate. It was kind of the issue that Lestream had as well during their defenses on club, is that they were getting droned out and they weren't able to reposition themselves and Empire just fell into their own trap there. Lestream looking pretty good on the coastline attack so far. And don't forget though, traditionally this is an attack sided map, although Lately, it hasn't quite been that way. No, and we've seen it with these teams as well that it, it decide, you know, which way the map sort of flows into, you know, looking at a broader, um, you know, looking at the game as a as a broader as a, as a whole. It doesn't always, it's not always so reflective of how two teams can sort of throw down on it. And I think the Empire are, are certainly capable of putting up a good fight here. They're maybe just going to play this a little bit more conservatively. Joystick getting picked very early on last time really didn't help them. Um, and it's something that we saw was a bit of a pattern in Clubhouse as well. If Joystick tended to, you know, the round that Joystick died earlier there as well was the first round. And the stream picked that one up as well. So losing the man very early on can be pretty devastating, um, especially if you're going to rely on that for uh, on that operator for a couple of frags as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, still holding down where he can onto the cool vibe stairs. Scyther does have a ADS down here. He's going to be holding down very tightly. I mean, they were playing this fairly similar to how they did last time, but this time it's going to be Scyther on the Maestro, who's playing here. And instead, we're going to have Shockwave on the Legion, who's playing somewhere around Billiards, I assume, here. As Hicks' switch zone does start to make its way in into Aquarium. You know, there's no ADS behind there. There's no one playing around. You can see the Maestro come as well. He's going to disable it temporarily as he takes out Legion Mines as well. I think that's kind of... No, no, actually, that was smart from Hanks because he takes on the Maestro Cam and there's no chance of the Twitch room getting destroyed there early on. That's that's the best way to use Twitch in this scenario is to figure out what it is. Oh, I bet IQ is really wishing that she still had grenades there as our farmers. They're going to fall to Karzeka. Uh, down but not out. The grenade does, however, come through from Rise on the book. And that is going to make it a little bit easier to remove those bandits. Um, but, I mean, for what reason, I'm not too sure because they've not got a hard breach. So I don't really know why 
um, the IQ there was uh, was kind of going for those. I We're think he just saw him and just wanted to get the pick. Yeah, he maybe just wanted to get the point there, they put the pick onto the bandit there, but you can see that joystick Defender is going to punish Uno dropping. for playing a window this time. And that's going to be, that's a really important kill at this stage. That's going to really shift the, uh, the momentum back into the favor of Team Empire. Aquarium control has been gained. The plant is going to be going down. Shock there, going to pick up the kill onto the planter. Dockerby calls are going to come through. That's going to waste a little bit of time of this diffuse, but Empire now have really got to work on this retake. You're going to want Joystick to start rotating pretty heavily, but he's going to be in almost a bit of a crossfire here as we've got Hicks on the Twitch, just waiting at the top of North Stairs. Is Joystick going to find him? No, damage taken, but no kill. Hicks is going to pick up that kill with the F2, proving superior at that kind of a range. Scyther going to take out right shot, going down in the process, 2v2, two versus one, all down to Hicks. Not a lot of time left on the Diffuse at this point. I think it's going to be Shepard that jumps on the Diffuse, trying to stick it as Scyther covers. Hicks is going to pick up one and he picks up the second kill. That's going to be the attackers winning the round. The stream holding the post plant perfectly. Absolutely devastating from the stream here. And uh, Hicks with a 3k on Twitch. Definitely a great pick coming out from him. As we move into round number three, Empire is starting to fall apart. It looks like they can't seem to find a defense here. And I think they're going to have to move to a different site and rethink their strategy a little bit. No. Okay. I was going to say. They picked it and then immediately they went off to Blue Bar Sunrise Bar. So we are going to move through into Blue Bar Sunrise Bar. Defense coming out from Team Empire. What do you think about this defense? I honestly don't like taking this site when there's no mirror available. You really don't see it played that often if there's no mirror on the board. Um, so I think they're going to six pick over onto the mute. I think the Maestro has probably been working quite well for him, but disabling that Maestro was really key Defenders in uh, the stream being able to get the plant down that last round. So well, maybe they're um, expecting the Twitch pick. Well, the Twitch drone came out. It disabled the Nitro so that he could still drone freely. Then it came back up, but now they know the Nitro is there, and then it grenaded. So yeah, eventually the Nitro does get destroyed, and that does allow them to plant. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it does go down. As we see round number three getting underway now. Team Empire not looking too good at all. Don't forget, this is the stream's map pick. They did choose to come to coastline, and traditionally we have seen most teams take their own map pick. Yeah, it is something that we've seen, and it is to be expected. Um, you know, if you're going to pick a map, you're going to pick it because you know that you're going to be pretty confident of winning it, but there's still plenty of rounds left to be played, and I'm sure that Empire are going to be able to show us, uh, you know, why they've picked Blue Bar this time, because like you say, it is a bit of a strange pick. Um, without the mirror and a little bit strange to maybe not bring the castle down here as well because castle can be quite important usually it is played quite heavily in conjunction with a mirror they're gonna have to do something about this dock and i'm not sure if that's why scyther has moved off the maestro onto the mute i maybe like bringing the mute makes a lot of sense here especially on this kind of site where there's a lot of vertical destruction you can bring in and you know there's also you get a nitro for that mute's a great pick but I think the Maestro is good here, and the, the point that I constantly make about Doku being, being brought in, that Remorse mentioned to me, that if Doku calls go out, the defense can't get on. Oh my god, Shockwave just interrupts me there as he just peeks it out and gets a beautiful kill onto Uno with a headshot. And there we go, it's already the Ash down. And that's a very, very good kill. And if that kill comes out and Maestro is, you know, on the board, then that's huge for the defenders, but not that big right now. It's still big because it's Uno, and we've seen the, the the rounds tends to flop in the way of who gets the first pick onto the you know the fragging operator, as it were. And for Uno to go down in the early stages, not very good at all. But saying that, Hicks was more than capable of picking up the frags when he had to last round. You can hear that Docker be that Docker be call was coming out just then. Joystick though, gonna pick up the kill onto Rise, as Hicks is still just holding an angle outside of Hooker deck. Just trying to find a kill onto anyone. Not really wanting to expose himself too much and uh, maybe cautious of any goo mines that are there. Shock is hungry for another though. He's definitely aware that there's somebody playing outside the deck. He's going to bait out the dock, will be calling. He is going to pick up that kill. He can now answer his phone in the safety and that is going to be Diffuser down. Another kill going to come out there from Shock. It's now all going to be down to Alpha as he's left one versus four. Joystick going to tear him apart. Much better defense there from Empire. Yeah, and they will find their first defense around here on Coastline. Much better from them. And I think this time they, so they played most of their defense upstairs. They didn't take the Maestro. They weren't relying on it as much and they instead brought Nitros. But I think more importantly, the Mute Pick was about the soft destruction there more than anything. And that allowed them to play vertically quite well. And, you know, on top of that as well, they got the opening pick onto Uno. And I, I still just kind of think that 
both teams play around their fraggers so well, but as soon as their fragger goes down, they don't really have the ability to push out the round. It was it was intriguing to see that they were able to win the defense by holding upstairs, which is somewhere that they've struggled to hold for two rounds in a row. I think uh, because they don't have to play it as close, right? It was the pressure, wasn't it? And yeah. it was the fact that they've got downstairs to fall back on. They've got rotates already pre-planned that they're going to be able to make in those final few seconds. Shock there. What about those couple of kills that he was able to get? Baiting out the Dockerby call that came through as Hicks pushed through. It was it textbook. And you can really take advantage of things like that because, you know, the Dockerby call goes through and it's, it's going to be your time to push because you're going to be anticipating that the defenders are going to be answering the phones. No, no, no. Shock there. Picking up the kill with ease. Going to be playing the castle this time, which I know is something that you are quite a big fan of. Do you think they're going to look to hold upstairs fairly heavily again with all this investment that they're making? No, I think they're just going to put the castles of abandon them completely. No, I think they are definitely going to try and hold on where they can upstairs. Coastline is one of those maps that is very heavily vertically played. And, you know, Empire have blown up to be able to do that with the smoke and the castle on the board. This is looking pretty good for them in terms of setup. Lestream have not exactly struggled to tear apart defenses so far, but they've definitely struggled to try and isolate defenders, I think. Yeah, and that's something that they're going to have to work on if they're going to try and take these coming rounds. Although, you know, they had a good couple of, they had a good showing for the first two rounds uh, on the attack of Hooker. Um, but, you know, Empire just switching it up a gear there. Um, we've seen this with Empire in the past is that they are able to just, you know, take things up a couple of notches, uh, you know, drop a gear as it were, and really start to focus on the task at hand. You know, they're going to be just trying to find a kill on to, I think it's Joystick playing in theatre. It seems to be the same sort of battle every single time. Joystick really hasn't got much business peeking that because Uno is going to find his head as Joystick tries to come out with the prone peek, but not working out for him. Karzeka going to get a kill straight back, bringing it to four men apiece. Yeah, and Logic Bombs are going to deploy here by Aces to try and move in where he can, but oh my god, Aces picks up a Karzeka as he tries to rotate around. So many SMG 12 kills coming out from Aces right now as he will hack the cameras. He will hack that phone and find all his leak nudes online as well. And we'll be in a 3v3 now as well. As Scyther does take down Hicks, now it's the 3v3. Not looking too good for Empire all of a sudden because they've lost complete vertical pressure, but they do have the diffuser down on main stairs, white stairs, black stairs, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to be down the there. Aces is looking for another kill now. As he's just going to push onto the blue bar door to office, it's going to be Shockwave that's waiting on the other side of that. Shockwave really got no business peeking this. The time is, of course, working down in his favor. The difficulty is he's going to be getting pressured from Rise above playing Buck. They're, they're doing a great job of hunting him out here, but I can't help but think that Shockwave is probably going to come out with this kill. And he is. He's going to get the down there onto Ace. He's going to get traded out straight away by Uno, but he's wasted a fair bit of time there. And to bring that to a two versus two maybe isn't too bad at this point, especially with the deniability that we've got left on the side of Team Empire. We've got three gas canisters, which in the final 45 or so seconds are going to be very, very crucial, along with Cypher's evil, evil eyes. Yeah, the ability to look through the smokes themselves with the evil eyes as well should benefit the defenders quite well. And we'll see a great position from Shepard as well. The nade comes out, they know where he is! Oh my god, did he get caught by an ADS? I didn't hear it go off. Ryan's going to try and get all the way in, he just takes the barbed way out. Uno moves through onto the other side. Scyther could go for the white peak here and try to get the kills, but Shepard takes down one, Shepard takes down two, and Team Empire take round number four. The pump shotty coming through once again for Team Empire. Shotgun OP once again, you can see it's, it's the perfect weapon at this stage for those final second pushes, especially when it's going to come through a door or down a hatch or through any sort of a confined area. And Shepard showing us exactly how it should be used there. Making those last two kills look relatively easy. Second round for Empire. These teams again neck and neck throughout this series. Yeah, this has been an insanely close series so far. And, uh, and there we go, neck and neck at two apiece. As we go back to the billiards room defense, I really don't... I don't know. I don't like them going here, but at the same time, where, where else can they go? They go penthouse. penthouse theater. That's not an easy site to hold without it, a mirror. Yeah, I get that. It is a site that we we saw hold successfully yesterday. There was a mirror in place, so it does change things Attackers up a little bit. But the mirror was getting hassled from below, and Buck was you, you know very used very effectively to open up those mirrors, almost making them a bit of a non-factor. Having the mirror there forces you to bring another C4 which is never really a bad thing. I do quite like to see the C4s out there for those, you know, plant denials. But this this defense just really hasn't been working for Empire, and they're going to have to do something 
pretty drastically different. They've also not brought a lesion this time, which um, I don't know if that's going to add any value or detract away. I don't think it's going to change much just because lesion, yeah, he can be annoying, but other than when there's a shield on the attack, I don't think generally, other than having a great gun, it doesn't really add that much to the roster. But against round number five, Empire again going to attempt this billiards room defense. You're not a fan of this? There's no castle here as well, which you're also not a fan of. Although, you do bring up the point that during that game that you said that the castle wasn't really doing anything, there was a sledge being played, there was a Zofia being played, and you know, we're not really seeing either of those operators being played by the stream. The only thing that they really have to take out castles here is Uno on the Ash. So, yeah, I think I think the castle could be good for them here. It, it definitely would be because Uno is going to want to use his utility to destroy Evil Eyes if possible. Uh, we're not seeing a Twitch this time on the lineup from the stream, so that's going to remove the ability to disable Evil Eyes. Obviously, Twitch doesn't destroy them, uh, just just disables. But so Ash is going to want to use his utility on Evil Eyes. So a castle would eat that utility up, and it would be better for uh, Team Empire. It might allow them just to hold a little bit longer. Uh, or to make use of the evil eyes a little bit later on. But Uno's going to have made his way well and truly into Blue Bar, just holding an angle there down onto Cool Vibe Stairs. I think he's going to be trying to find the kill onto Scyther. Uh, rise is going to be is just causing havoc all around him, opening up the floor, getting right in front of him. And that's actually going to cause him to get down from below, uh, from above, sorry. But it's Karzeka that's going to get the down, and he's going to get the kill onto the book as well. Karzeka making those holes work perfectly for himself, picking up two kills through the holes that Rise has made. The Dockerby call is going to come out, but it's going to be too late at this stage. Five versus three in favor of Empire. Yeah, Hank's going to drone out for himself here into a frame to see what exactly is going to go on. But a 5v3, as you say, and Kazek is going to get flashed, but Hicks doesn't seem to be able to push off this very well. Nitro goes out onto the aquarium door. Now Hicks knows he doesn't have to deal with it. He hops through all the way and takes down Kazeka. He has been lit up a little bit, so he's going to know that someone is playing near him. See Shockwave is holding down onto the couches there and sees what he can do. We still see Joystick still playing around luggage. They've got to know he's here because he just shot Hicks as he tried to move into Aquarium. And there we go. He'll actually shut down Alpha. I thought for sure he, this man's about to get refragged. But no, not just yet. So 2v4, Empire looking so good. What a shot from Hicks, though. Takes out Joystick and tries to even the score but out just a little bit. One minute left to go on the clock just about. And the stream not looking too good here so far. Hicks does have Diffuser. He doesn't have control of sight so far. So he should be able to get in and go for the plant. Does that have one X Garage remaining? That's going to be a factor here. But Nitros are going to come out from Shockwave. The reason the factor of having a Nitro here is going to push off the attackers who are trying to make the plant so early on. 35 seconds left to go on the clock. Smokes are going to go out. But the Nitro on the board, this isn't going to be too good. Shepard going to throw out smokes of his own as well. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. The Nitro finally going to be coming out from Shockwave. Doesn't manage to connect just yet. With 20 seconds left to go, this is not looking good. Empire's trying to close in from every single side. Scyther pushes out luggage and goes to the pre fires where he can, but Shepard takes down Hicks, and now it's all down to Aces in a 1v3. We've seen him get a 3k so far in Dokubi. Can he do it again? He does push all the way through, trying to find the kill onto luggage, but can't connect the shot. Scyther takes him down, and Empire takes round number five. Easy as that. Just goes to show that Empire must have just needed a little bit of a break from that site because they've come back and taken that round very convincingly. You you know, there's nothing really to to comment on there that they did wrong. Everything that they did was very right. The great initiative by Karzeka, getting the kills onto both Ryze and Uno. Ryze, I don't, I'm not sure what he was doing exactly because Uno was just sat there minding his own business, holding the angle there onto Cool Vibes, trying to pick up the kill onto Maestro, played by Scyther. And then Ryze comes in, opens up all the floor. Uno's still holding his angle. And all of a sudden, Karzeka gets the down onto Uno. And then he gets the kill onto Rise, and then he completes the kill onto Uno. And it just it was such a large loss of utility at that point, going in five versus three, and like I think it was the halfway Typical point of the round. Means, just coming in here, just ruining everything, destroying the whole floor. You know, that's someone's property, man. You can't. The remodeling. You can't remodel. You need, you need, you need permission. You need permission from the council or something. <laughs> anyway, it's gonna be six two on Scyther. That is he's been doing a great role on this kind of like support fragging role that he's been doing. It's uh, it's honestly a wonder to watch. Him and Shockwave have really been pulling it through for Empire. Yeah, doing a great job. And it's good when you've got players on the team that have got the ability to be able to go off because it takes the pressure off Joystick. Um, I didn't catch Joystick's kills there, but I don't think he's... Uh, he's certainly not top-fragging anyway. That's definitely Scyther. So 
it just allows the ability to be able to, you know, play players a little bit more flexibly, and it takes the pressure off one person so much. The one important kill that Shockwave did get that round is onto the IQ who tried to trade him out on luggage. Unfortunately, he didn't kill the Habana before he hopped over. If he did, that round would have been a little bit more favoured into Empire, but we can only speculate. It's a very difficult angle to get. If you're vaulting over something, then you've got to go really hard right or hard left. It's just really difficult to uh, to be able to get your gun around that quickly to Bomb make that shot. And obviously, attackers. someone like Joystick's going to punish you every time for that. But, you know, almost not aware that someone's playing down in Sunrise, and I believe it's going to be Scyther again. Rise, though, going to pick up the kill onto Shepard. Shock picking up that kill onto Alpha. Two quick kills coming out there in the first 40 seconds, taking us in four versus four as Sunrise control is being battled for. And it seems as though Empire are almost largely giving it up. There's only Scyther playing on site. He's going to miss his shots onto the Hibana, but manages to complete with the shotgun kill. Ace is going to pick up one. Uno, another shock, another one. Two versus two now. The Diffuser's down in the sight, I believe, but Ace has just picked it up while picking up a kill onto Shock. Plant is going down, all down to Karzeka. Is he going to be able to find these last two kills? This round is explosive. It's all happening so quickly. He's got to play just the other side of the Sunrise Bar. He doesn't know where to look. Uno's going to pick up the final kill. Lestream with a really aggressive round that it pays off for them. Lestream with a really great intel gathering early on with their prep phase drones. So they were droning out Kitchen very well. They just realized that no one from Empire is even playing around there or even looking at it. So they just jumped all the way in there. They said, we're just going to take the site. It's free real estate. Take it. Take it. The thing is, last time that Blue Bar was defended, Empire won it really well, but they heavily defended upstairs. That is true. And Lestream spent a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to get hooker control, and it was Shock again that picked up two great kills on the Valkyrie, baited out the call from the Dockerby, and the push really just came to nothing because they lost a lot of men, and then it was just, you know, they were able to just trade it out from there. Empire won the round. Empire then tried to do exactly the same thing, and Lestream have just gone... We're not going to play into that. You know, we're not going to play into that. We're just going to rush the site because you're only playing one guy on it. You're going to force people to rotate. We're just going to pick up kills as players rotate back down to site. So, really good initiative from the stream. Great adaptation. Something that we talk about quite a lot. Um, and it, it caused them to win the round. We're going in now 3-3. So, proving today that Coastline isn't favoured attacker nor defender so far. And a very similar story to how we saw in Clubhouse with Empire taking three defence rounds there after the first half. So, let me see. Empire, I'd say, are still looking fairly favorable just because this, traditionally speaking, is an attacker-sided map. Although, tradition hasn't always proven a fact here. No, it's not. And I think it speaks to how good of a team Empire can be in that they're able to pick up defensive rounds on maps that seem attacker-favored uh, based off the current stats and stuff that we can, we can go and look at. Something that I quite like on both sides now is that we're seeing the castle but we're also seeing the sledge. Yeah, that is that is very true. But at the same time as well, we've seen the double. Normally when a team is running Zofia and Ash, it means they're running double entry. But from Empire, it almost seems like triple entry from them because they also have the IQ. And while you can play IQ in a really heavy support role, there is no Echo. There is, well, there is, there is an ADS with Jaegers, but there's no bandits. There's not really a lot for IQ to actually do here. So she could actually make her entry, but she has got Diffuser. So the roles from Empire seem very undefined here at the moment because they don't have the hard reach with Diffuser, whereas the stream is playing a little bit more traditionally. I, I like that from Empire because they're not sticking to their roles very well because normally when you get the kill on the hard reach, you can normally say Diffuser's down here, but you can't normally say that with Empire. It's kind of all over the place. Joystick just trying to find the kill through the floor. Doesn't manage to make many shots connect, if any, actually, as he's going to rotate around, use his utility to open up the double walk, double uh, window onto billiards. Like you say, a little bit of a slower round, not really all too many defined roles. Empire are clearly setting themselves up for a heavy Aquarium push, but they're going to need some presence elsewhere on the map to allow them to do that. Look at this angle here from Uno. Just a couple of shots in the wall next to the reinforcement. He is going to take some shots through that very hole, juice himself up, overhealing quite substantially there, uh, especially with, at the point that we're at in the round. He's getting quite a lot of pressure, but he's in a pretty safe space currently. Joystick underneath now in blue, just really carefully deciding where he wants to deploy that last breaching round to make a nice hole in the floor and cause a little bit more discomfort for the defenders upstairs. But again, moving into the final minute, and we've still got 10 operators on the map. Yeah, there's still quite a lot of people on the board, but Empire have done very, very well to bring back rounds, even when they've wasted quite a lot of time. 
in trying to take control. And we'll see Alpha Matt has made his way through into the security room. So this could be an interesting room coming out from him. But it looks like Empire are aware of his position here. As Shockwave picks up the first kill of the round. There goes Aces. And Joystick going to hold a very tight angle here. Doesn't manage to get the kill just yet. I'm wondering if he's actually wanting to push up this. But no. Alpha Matt rotates all the way through onto main stairs. Uno goes down to a nade coming out there from Kazeka. That's a beautiful nade coming through. But will revive himself and come all the way through. So those things left to go. Hicks will pick up Shockwave. He tries to push through. It's not looking too good at all. Joystick shuts down Alpha Mo on the flank. And oh my god, Uno denies the plant. There goes Shepard. He can't get it down. And this is not looking too good. Kasaka picks up the defuser, but instantly gets shut down by Uno again. Joystick takes up Higgs, and now it's a 2v2. Joystick picks up another one. Oh my god, it's all down to Uno in a 1v2. It's all through to Joystick and Scyther. Scyther has defuser. Joystick goes down. Uno finds his third. He's got to find the fourth. It's a 1v1. He's going to push all the way through. Scyther finds him, but no, Uno finds Scyther in return. Uno Meister himself just shuts down every single member from Empire and brings in the round for the stream. Uno going huge there for his team. With a 4k. With a Beautiful. 4k. What about that? Those holes that he was using to peek on, there were so many peek holes either side of that reinforcement. He was just so slippery. There was, you know, you know Empire had no idea where well. he was. What's funny about that is if he hadn't been playing Doc, he wouldn't have got those. If he'd been playing Rook, he probably would have died because the nade came through it downed him. You maybe want to argue there. Rook does reduce explosive damage. And maybe he wouldn't have gone down to that nade. But I'm pretty sure that nade went smack bang on him and he would have downed him anyway. So... With the, with the amount of damage that he took that round, I think he took enough to warrant bringing the stim pistols for himself because he just was able to keep himself well, yeah, up for him, so long. Him actually reviving himself, I think, won the round. I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, his great gunplay came out into effect there as well. As and he pick up a 4k for himself and completely denied everything going down for the Team Empire. But otherwise, they would have shut him down completely. It was a it was a pretty one-dimensional push from Empire. Joystick had control downstairs in blue. It didn't ever really push um, Cool Vibe stairs on, right up until the end. But it was the roam game that was happening down near server, which was really you know difficult for the for Joystick to deal with because he came to her head with the castle. Didn't manage to get the kill. Castle was then able to rotate back up to the site, and ultimately the push just came through from Aquarium, but there wasn't enough utility deployed to make, you know, to really make anything stick. And you know, just sat behind that reinforced wall, just proved far too powerful. Yeah, far too powerful indeed. We're going to move through into round number eight. However, it's going to be in the stream in their second defense, having taken their first defense point successfully and quite convincingly indeed. Pretty much coming down to Uno though. Uno himself though is going to go for a spawn peek here, but not be able to get anything just yet. This is kind of what I mentioned during the last time games about Valk getting banned. Is that a Valk on coastline? You can play it insanely aggressively. Uno could just do things like this. It's, it's high risk, high reward, and with the way that Uno's been playing at the minute, you, you obviously understand that he's feeling pretty confident, um, and he's, he's you know up for a bit of a challenge. He's obviously spotted something he likes to look up there. He's going to peek out, and he is going to pick up the kill onto Shock. Taking the hard breacher off in the first minute of the round is huge. The risk has certainly paid off there for Uno as he picks up a great peak early on. Joystick there with a body right in front of him. Doesn't manage to connect his shots as Aces is going to run out and get a kill onto Scyther as well. It's all falling apart now for Empire as they go down two men to, so sorry, five to three within the first minute of this round. Yeah, not looking too good at all for Empire. They're looking pretty far apart and pretty isolated, but two minutes left to go on the clock. They have plenty of time to try and bring it in. And they are bringing the Dokubi themselves as well. So they have potential to try and bring this in. They have to start finding frags. They have to start finding control where they go through. Joyce is going to find a fight already onto the Cool Vibes. Doesn't manage to connect any shots just yet, though. He's still trying to make his way through downstairs area, but this isn't looking good. With the Penthouse Theater, you really need that hard breacher. Team Empire don't have it just yet. They're going to have to try and push through one way or the other. This isn't looking too good. They don't have their entry frag, and Joystick isn't really doing much downstairs at all. He should really try and rotate up white at this point, but he's running out of time to try and make something happen here. Joystick is going to move through onto white stairs while the rest of his team try and push through the other side. This is a classic Empire strat with the crouch walking Ash coming out from Joystick. There is barbed wire right in front of him, however. This is not looking too good. He's going to destroy it. Hicks is going to be playing onto the top of White Stairs to be able to see if he's going to go through. Flashbangs are going to come down. Joystick making all the way up here. But oh, he takes him down! What? Joystick picks up Hicks. And Uno goes down to Shepard. And now Empire starting to bring it back. 3v3 now. There's Empire trying to make the way in. But Alphamus shuts down Joystick before he can do much. 
And Kazaka's got to try and repel in. Kazaka is going to make his entry in, but no, he's going to let Soam lit up. Here's the Legion Mine as well, and Alpha Med takes him down easy as that. Shepard in a 2v1 now. Oh my god, a 1v1! What a shot from Shepard! Takes down Rice, takes down Alpha Med. And now it's all between him and Aces to try and bring it in. Aces on the flank through VIP. There is a flank watch drone. He knows that he's there. He's going to try and move into the site. He does have a logic bomb remaining which he's going to deploy now, and he has two smoke grenades left remaining as well. He's going to try and put the smoke down, hopefully to get the plant off here as well. Looks like he's going to be able to put the diffuser down shortly, as Ace is a little bit confused of what he needs to try and do here. Be good for the pre-fire through the smoke, but he can't get it. Shepard hot out the window as well. It's all down to Ace to try and bring this in. He's got to recover the diffuser. He's got to take down Shepard, but Shepard repels all the way up to the top. He's got a great post plant situation because the bathroom is actually open. Ace is going to recognize that, puts the Legion mine down so he can't sprint all the way through. And Shepard's gonna, just going to go for it. He's got the CZ out. He goes for the pre fire He takes him down. Shepard in 3v1. He brings it in. Aces goes down. Empire take round number eight. Great clutches coming through from both team members so far. What a fantastic clutch there from Shepard. Really, really doing what it took. Uh, like you say, 3K. Got the diffuser down in the midst. You know, in the in the midst of all that. Um, it's just, it's incredible game sense at that at that point. And, you know, the flick with Dockerby's DMR really isn't any mean feat. It's it really, you know, it hits really hard. It's very good at headshots purely because of the accuracy of that first one bullet. But, you, you know, you can't argue with the way that he was able to get those kills. And, uh, and you know, but then again, the way that Legion was played as well. Aces, the goo mine underneath the stairs, it gave him the sound cue that he needed. He just didn't have the time to come off the diffuse and then get the kill, and then get back on the diffuse. Um, so it was it was just a really good play all round. Empire picking up the round, all tied up at 4-4. Uh, we've definitely got a game on our ends there. I can see this one going to overtime. Yeah, I and mean, you know, we almost did see Clubhouse going to exactly. overtime as well. But at the end of the second half now, Team Empire have been looking pretty good for themselves. The fact that they were able to bring that round in despite really early losses, especially of the hard reacher coming through, I'm absolutely amazed of Empire's ability to bring back rounds from the brink of defeat. It's been really good from them. We haven't seen the similar things from the stream, but from the start, the stream have always looked pretty powerful. And, you know, they are one of the better teams in the EU right now. It's like you say, that the only objective on coastline that you actually need a hard breach for, or not even need, but it's just better to have one, is that penthouse. So as soon as you see Shockwave getting picked off within the first, I think it was like 40 seconds from that aggressive run out from Uno, you start to think to yourself, ooh, Empire, they've got a, they've got a tough hill to climb here, they've got a really tough challenge. But like you say, great individual plays, uh, sometimes what it takes to clutch out the round, and you just can't get away from that, you can't rely on it all the time, but it really does help when you've got a player like Shepard that's able to keep a cool head in that situation, get two kills, get the plant down, and then pick the final kill up on the diffuser. Um, it's, it certainly goes a long way as to, uh, as to helping your team, and helps keep them in it, tying it up at four apiece. Yeah, looking definitely very good for Empire now to try and move in here. And as you say, it's been all tied up, and we have already seen this situation before coming out of Clubhouse. Empire, I don't think I don't think they're looking as strong here on Coastline. They had a bit of a weak start coming out, and especially they had a weak start coming out in their attack. And these rounds have been very, very, very close. I think Empire is still struggling, even though Coastline tends to be a very open map. They've tended to struggle getting early control here. I don't think they want to rush the control all too much. You know, they've they've got quite a bit of time to be able to make some, you know, good drone work and figure out who's playing off-site. Being able to get the upstairs control at the halfway point of the round and uh, and be able to open up VIP. We've got Karzeka there on the sledge. He's going to be able to do some really good work there. Um, Alfama there is going to be playing on to Cool Vibe Stairs, just rotating down. He was obviously playing upstairs in Hooker, but he's choosing just to uh, play his life, get back down onto the site. It's not a bad you know, position for him to be in at the minute, but I'd very much preferred to see a Roma playing up there that they could then go and challenge onto Hook because as soon as, all you, as soon as you manage to push the defenders back down to the side from upstairs and then open up VIP, it really does become you know, a bit of a field day for the attackers, or it can be, um, in terms of picking up those kills vertically. Yeah, it definitely can be. And we do talk about vertical play quite a lot. When Lestream were attacking, that vertical play was used very well against them. 
and we already seen that the plate coming into effect because Empire do have now upstairs control and having a sledge in that early can do very very well on a kitchen service entrance but oh no not enough intel coming out from Joystick there he will lose the fight against Alpha Man Aces takes down Shockwave as well now it's a 3v5 but we've seen a very similar situation come out before from Empire and they still managed to bring it back Scythe is still playing upstairs but oh the shotgun from Rise through the vertical plate he takes down one but instantly gets traded out by Scyther now it's a 4v2. Not looking too good for Empire, but they still have the Dokubi on the board. They still have Logibomb. They still have plenty of utility to move through here, and they start to get the intel as well. Drones are coming out. They know someone's still playing Sunrise as well on top of that because Joystick died to them. So Shepard going to move all the way in here and just have Diffuser. Oh, no, the Maestro Cam. That's not good at all. He could put a Dokubi call out, but it's not really going to match too much, and Smokes are going to go through, but they know exactly where he is, and he still has all of his utility up. Scythe going to put it down, but no, Uno through the smoke gets one. And there we go, Shepard. Unable to put the diffuser down, will go down. Another stream, take round number nine. Very well played from them. Especially great use of Maestro now, which I'm glad to see coming out from the stream. They're just so difficult to deal with, especially if you place them like behind a door or behind an entry point. You've then got to totally expose yourself to the defenders where you're expecting them to be like, obviously in kitchen and further on to be able to deal with it. There was just not a lot that uh, the Dockerby was left to do there. And I think it all comes down to the picks that happened early on. The, the trade that uh, Scyther got back down onto, I believe it was Rise playing downstairs, it almost just wasn't enough at that point. The control had been gained upstairs, but the stream really didn't care. They were just saying, you know what, we'll give you the control upstairs and we're then going to kill you through the holes that you're going to start making. Re really good defensive kitchen. Um, and Attack like you say, it's, it's getting a little bit closer, but the stream are just edging it at the moment. Uh, they're only a couple of rounds away now and they're really going to want to focus in. You can see Uno continuing his good form there with 12 kills. Um, there's no stopping that man this evening, it seems. Yeah, he's definitely put down the Uno as a part of them, as they're coming through into a round number 10. To be Team Empire on a bit of a lost streak at the moment. The stream looking very, very good for themselves so far. This uh, this defense has been looking pretty good for them so far, but we're going to go to a blue bar and sunrise bar defense. And if you remember, this, uh, this was very weird for Empire as well, because when they went here, the stream just kind of just... Yeah, we just took it for free. They just got into kitchen. They got everything under their control. See the stream. I'm gonna play against themselves a little bit and not let Empire get so much early control by castling out the kitchen window. I think it was one of the quicker rounds that we saw. That a lot of the action happened within the first minute, the second time that Empire chose to defend this site. Uh, the stream really took the initiative. Saw that the site was left pretty open. Uh, only a couple of the defenders from Empire were playing on it, and they just were able to jump in and get the kills that they needed. So it was it was quite a quick round. There was a lot of initiative taken from the stream, but it was a big risk. It was a big reward. That doesn't always work off. I think we're going to see Empire you know, take their typical slower approach here. We've seen them slow down a little bit, and I think Empire can be a bit better when they work a little bit quicker paced. And I'm not sure if that's just something that they're struggling to deal with from the stream, in that the stream are doing a very good job of slowing them down on their pushes. They definitely are. And Joystick is going to be able to get all the way in through Inquarium to be able to destroy the barbed wire and just hold it all down as you can. But... Empire, again, they don't really have as much control as they really need, but Uno, despite that, is going to shut it all down. Shockwave goes down yet again so early, losing the hard breacher. How did Uno pick that out? Because I'm pretty sure he was on the roof. I'm not sure, but Joystick's now aware of uh, some sort of presence over in theatre, but Uno's just going to be allowed to rotate all the way back through Hall of Fame and into VIP. And again, he's just, you know, he's the unknown again. Um, the, the, the attackers don't really seem to know where we are. He's got a castle barricade that he's actually going to take down, which is going to allow him a little bit of more visibility. He's aware that Joystick was last seen playing over in Luggage, and he's certainly going to be looking for that kill, but Joystick isn't aware that there's going to be a defender just led down the other side of the pool table. Ace is going to peek up. Joystick does manage to find his head, however. Joystick just making sure he's not going to get pushed from the back as well, as that's a pretty important kill at this point, because if they were to lose Joystick at this stage, I'd say that would be a round on the board for the stream but Hicks is going to go down Shepard putting some good shots in Hicks will get revived he's a, definitely an operator that's worth reviving at this point he's probably got two smoke grenades left in his pocket 
And they're going to want to be getting deployed very, uh, very soon as we enter the final minute. Two quick kills there coming out from Empire. Really shifting it into their favour. Four versus two now with only 50 seconds left on the clock. Shepard has the diffuser in hand. Joyce is going to drop the hatch and pick up a kill onto Hicks. All going to be down to Alfara as he picks up a quick double kill with two headshots back to back. One versus two. This is very doable now for the Maestro with that clutch factor. Alder machine gun. All he's got to do now is find another couple of kills. He's got good information as to where the attackers of Empire are. The plant is going down. He's struggling really to get through the rotate hole and the Dockerby calls are still ringing through. The plant does go down. Shepard closes things out. But that was nearly the round for Lestream. Nearly a very big round for them indeed. Nearly a huge round, yeah. Definitely coming out from them. Team Empire still going to keep up in terms of rounds and are going to bring us to round number 11 with five apiece. So all tied up still. This is, uh, I really can't call this in terms of balance of power because both of these teams... There's been so many close rounds and so many 1vx's already. I really can't call this at all. Both teams are looking really strong. I don't even think it's in terms of like big mistakes coming out. It's just time management from both sides. A little bit of time management, a few good individual plays. We're nearly at the end of this game now. We're nearly, you know, we've nearly seen coastline to the coastline to completion. We're at five five. What are you thinking if you're Vitality? I don't want to dwell on the next match all too much because I think there's still a lot to be said about here, but if you're Vitality, you've got to be looking and going, whichever one of these teams we go up against tonight, they're going to give us a really good battle because this has just been so close. You, you know what's funny? Because I've been saying how the stream and Empire have been playing very, very similar around their fraggers of, you know, Joystick and Scyther. I, I think that Vitality kind of play the same way, a little bit passively more so. But they definitely play around BB quite a lot. And I think that's definitely going to come into a factor. But yeah, if I was Vitality right now and I'm looking at this matchup and I'm looking at how Joystick is playing, I'd be very, very scared of him right now if he did come down. Or, you know, even if I'm looking at the stream, I'd be pretty scared of Uno, especially with the amount of clutching that Uno's been able to do and the amount of just insane frags. Like, Uno, I think he peeked from the VIP hole up onto the roof while Shockwave is trying to get the billiards wall open as Havana. If he's doing things like that, and he's that confident on the mute MP5, imagine what he can do on the Nash. And we've already seen what he can do on the Nash. It, it was even the the Valk MPX, and he got he got the kill in the same in the same situation. Um, so yeah, like you say, a lot of clutch. You know, a lot of what is this about? Shepard picking up a very very early kill there onto the Jaeger. That's a really big loss, surely. But maybe, why is Alphama there? I think he's just trying to re I think he's trying to barricade the double window. It maybe got open for some reason. Joystick as well gonna pick up a kill onto Aces. This is the Empire that we're used to seeing at the end of games. They really, really step it up in these final couple of rounds and they're gonna want to close things out here. Two kills within the first minute. It's standing them in very good stead to take this round. Yeah, definitely those drones are gonna start coming out here. Empire looking pretty good already in a 5v3. But we still got smoke up on the table, and we still got pulse up on the table as well. And we still got rise. Don't forget with the double kill card, Zekka and Cypher going down. Okay, oh my God, what just happened there? And now single-handedly, rise has managed to even out the scoreboard into a 3v3. Joystick slowly pushing up and trying to take the gunfight against Hicks, and he doesn't win it because Uno from the other side will take him down. Hicks is actually going to get injured, but instantly revived out by Uno. And this is not looking too good for Team Empire all of a sudden, losing their really heavy advantage early on. This is not looking good at all. They still have plenty of utility on the board, and this is one of the only rounds they actually still have their hard breacher alive. It's, there's value in the hard breach. That's probably the best thing that the hard breacher can open in this scenario from VIP looking on into billiards. But like you say, to have a very early advantage of, of uh, you know getting those two kills very early on within the first minute, it, it seems like, like a bit of a shame to then lose two to an SMG 11 and at such, you know, obviously close range, I imagine. Um, but Shepard going to be trying to pick up another kill here uh, with Doc B's DMR, and he's very, very close. Got a couple of the defenders playing all around the, uh, the cool vibe stairs. Shepard could actually plant at this point, and I think that's probably what he's going to try and go for. Um, surprised he's maybe not smoking off as much as, uh, especially seeing as he's got two smokes left, maybe saving them for the post plant. But look at this time that's being wasted. In, the, in, the, in that time, Hicks has been able to pick up the kill onto shock shepherd is going to trade it straight back out two versus one i think he could have got the plant down in that time because he's not got another logic bomb left he's very conscious of the c4 kill that could come through from beneath but in the form of a nitro and there's intel in the site in the form of evil eyes so 
although we've seen Shepard clutch up before, he's got a very difficult job ahead of him. He's going to actually go searching for the kills now with only 20 seconds left, vaulting in, just narrowly missing out on the kill onto the pulse. That CZ. No. Oh! Shepard's going to pick up the kill onto Uno, and he's already got the down onto Rise. Yeah, so he was playing around Vaze, and Rise tried to pick it out, but he got downed on the cross. And then, yeah, he gets the kill there. And then all of that was about that he knows that he's down. He's just got to go down, and he's got to get the kill. The pulse is there. There were floors open, so he couldn't go into the pool table and plant it. And even if he did, pulse doesn't even need to use the pulse monster because there was a there was a maestro come up. So, yeah, he had to go down, and he had to get the kill. And that was really, really well played coming out from him. Shepard, again, with the clutch factor. Second clutch on attacking rounds for Shepard on this, on this map. He's really... You know, he's really making that Docker be do some good work, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. The CZ as well is not really that normally of a popular sidearm coming out because it's normally the SMG-12, which we saw from Aces, and you got a 3K in the very first round as well, don't forget, with the Docker B. So, uh, Attackers need to yeah, locate looking really good for Empire to move on to match point, but the stream could very easily take us to overtime right now. And we've seen them defending Kitchen before. They defended Kitchen successfully back a couple of rounds ago in round nine. So, yeah, like you say, there's certainly no reason why we couldn't go to an overtime. We saw a different Empire coming out, getting two early kills there. I'm not sure if that was initiative and, you know, on on the team of Empire for, for getting those kills, or if it was Lestream maybe just being a little bit sloppy. I think trying to barricade the double window in Billiards at that point as Jaeger, you know, probably not the best idea. You're going to get punished for it. But then, you know, Empire kind of threw that all away when they lost two kills quickly of their own. So I'm not sure if we're going to see Empire maybe come out a little bit differently here. Top floor control last time really didn't work out all too well for them as they, uh, they just ended up getting killed through the angle from below. I'd like to see where, the, where this push is going to come from because I feel like it needs to be a little bit different to what happened last time because it just really didn't work for them. No, it didn't work out for them at all. But we'll see how this goes down. And... Uh... I, I just, I still can't call it. This is so insanely close. But we'll see. Calls should start to come out here slowly from Empire as they do start to start to drone out the upstairs area. But I'm looking at the lineups for both teams and no one has really changed anything about this lineup. There's been some variation coming up from the stream. But from Empire, they're just kind of taking the same operator lineup, slowly changing out Shepard between the IQ and the Dukebi. I think that's mainly because the Capital ban is coming to effect it, because he was playing a lot of Capital on Clubhouse. But other than that, Empire just kind of just make it work. And I think that a lot of top tier teams have been doing that a lot more recently. It shows the, com you know, being comfortable in a role. And like you say, they really have been making things work quite well. You can see an early Dockerby call is going to come through, which is going to allow a little bit of control of VIP as Karzeka is able there to just open up some of the floor and start peeking on in. The kill is going to come out, or a down, should I say, from Joystick onto Aces, as Scyther is going to be the other side of the penthouse, ready to push, but it does look as though we're going to see Uno dropping the hatch, but Shock is there to get the cross. That was a three-way cross there set up by Empire. Joystick is going to pick up another kill, and again, three kills within the first half of the round. Hicks and Rise now. They're the last two on the board for Lestream. Rise is going to find one onto Shock as that makes it four versus two. Minute 15 left. Upstairs control hasn't quite been gained yet because we still have Hicks playing upstairs on the Maestro with the LMG. Not ideal for him though as he is going to be quite heavy and loud but he is going to pick up the kill onto an unsuspecting joystick. Is this falling back in the favour of Lestream? It could do but their positioning isn't the best right now. Empire could start to move up. Hicks is going for the pre fight know exactly where he is right now. Oh my god, Hicks takes down Karzeka, but he's the last one remaining. He doesn't get the pistol kill, and it's all down to Hicks versus Shepard. Again, Shepard in a 1vx situation, but this time it's a 1v1. He's in a post plant. Hicks will drop the hatch. He'll try to move in. He should have intel on the site as to where Shepard has gone. He'll start to push up. He still has the Maestro cam up, so he knows that Shepard has started to rotate out, and he'll go for the defuse. He's trying to just stick it. He's trying to bait out the peak, but Shepard is not brave enough yet. He's not stupid enough either. He's going to hold it down and see what he can do. Hicks is trying to peek out desperately to find this kill onto Shepard, who's just hiding away from him. He's going to run out all the way. He can't find him, and he's run out of time, and Hicks does get dinked in the ass right there. As Shepard not looking too good at all. But uh, yeah, he just has a great position. And CZ takes him down. Shepard takes round number 12 single handedly for Team Empire there right at the end. And there we go. This could be GG well played coming out. Team Empire will take the series 2 to 0.
beautiful coming out from Team Empire. The stream with a great effort though. As the stream, you really can't be disappointed with that performance. The, the you know they really took them down to the wire there on coastline, and it wasn't that. It wasn't that the stream lost that. I think that Empire really took a lot of initiative and won it. Uh, there was there was not all too many mistakes coming out from Emp uh, from the stream there. You can see there Uno Master picking up 14 kills, Hicks as well picking up 10.